In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, St. Teresa, pray for us. St. Bartholomew, Apostle, pray for us. I don't know much about him. I'm going to have to read about him today. But I'll put the link down below for you. And remember to get your blessed rose petal. It's so consoling. It's so healing. And your 100% rose oil. I, I got some and it's healing for me. But it's also the aroma. So beautiful and wonderful. Uh, get it online though because it's very expensive in the stores they they pitch it as perfume because it smells so nice but it is an essential oil so we really should have some uh, I know it cleared up a skin infection for me that doesn't mean it would for anybody else but I was impressed I, I just put it on and by morning that infection was gone so for what and I was, it was smelling great at the same time so just so you know it's got some really good medicinal properties as well that are proven but uh you can look it up and see if it works for you maybe it does or maybe uh you can just smell it <laughs> whatever works for you and this the rosary of the unborn we're still fighting to stop abortion the rosary of the unborn is proven by blessed mother to be one of the biggest uh, defenses to stop abortion our Lord loves this uh, rosary of the unborn. You pray as much as you can. Um, I have this Our Lady Queen of Peace House of Prayer newsletter. <laughs> and you can get this from the House of Prayer in uh, Florida. That's the one I recommend you go to because that one seems to be the most sane. And... Uh, this is, it talks about her message to Christina uh, in July, and it's online. You can read it, but let me tell you, when you read this, you have to read it very carefully and go over every sentence a couple times because it's going to be a doozy, and you really want to read it because it's so true, but it's the stuff they never tell you about, the stuff that's going on in church. You could say, well, Anna... Why do I have to go to the sacraments if God's going to take it away? I mean, it's kind of like, why would you fall in love with someone who's just going to die? I mean, what a heartbreak. Isn't it better just to be alone? Well, not really. We're going to need the graces of the sacraments to help us through the dry spell. Remember, going to the sacraments right now is taking medicine. And you want to take medicine right or to defense before you get sick. If you knew this disease, a disease was coming, would you not take some vitamin C before getting exposed? But it's like that with the sacraments. Although so much better, so much stronger, those graces stay with you. So we need to pick up those graces while we can and like a backpack, put it on. And so when there's a dry spell, we can we can have the um, the endurance I guess to to persevere and suffer through but don't don't get completely worried if you're unable to stock up on a lot of graces before your cat you're caught off guard and sort of to speak all you have to say is blessed mother help or Jesus help me and believe me they're right there to help you so but if you can highly recommended and uh, that you do that otherwise you're kind of like the the foolish virgins in the bible that didn't store up their oil so if you got the message and you're ignoring it god will judge you however if you didn't get any messages and then you find yourself stuck or caught and you ask our lord for help he'll surely help you because our god is a loving god and he knows what graces he's given you and what ones have not been given to you either by your parents or society or the way you've been raised or the state school you're forced to go to and all this and godlessness and and he knows those things and those things are weighed into your judgment of how he's going to treat you whereas people like me who study church you know the church laws and stuff and want to practice them and go to the sacraments my stakes are a lot higher how I'm going to be judged is a lot higher and, I ha and, and because I have the responsibility of, of evangelization pulling people in and, and helping them to stay solid so my weight my backpack is going to be heavier but let me give those graces to you now so that you can persevere and I will share them with you 
But now it's your turn. You've got to do the work. And uh, it's up to you. But I highly recommend you read this. I'd like to go over every single part of it right now. But I just don't. I can't do it right now on the internet. But I would. I would totally. She, look she goes. This, this newsletter is great. She goes into description of every little part. Of these. My church. It's destruction has begun. This is no shock. Really. I have left you the sacramentals. That will help and protect you. I call you people of the world. The darkness is entering the church. They've got a gift shop with lots of different things here. Books, matrix metal, flat picture. But they you also can get the 3D image still from New York. Highly, highly recommended. Um, they also have blessed St. Benedict uh, crosses with the metal with um, it, that have been exercised. And, and blessed by Father McGinnity and then sent from Ireland to these houses of prayer and, and she's got some in Florida so you may want to ask her what how much they are uh, the matrix metal I highly recommend that she's got the blessed rose petal like I said I have that in my scapular which I love and and uh, I consider them like like the blessed petals of uh, the same, the same, uh, in the same category as these blessed rose petals from uh, St. Michael's Order Postulate. If you can get both of them, great, awesome. I totally recommend that. Lots of cures from this, and that with the Lord's water. Now remember the Holy Love, the Holy Love um, Shrine in Ohio also has blessed water that has similar properties to our Lord's water. It, it, our Lady's Lord's water it evaporates quickly and it has the same healing properties. So you can have both of those if you want. You've got special prayers, promises a second guardian angel to help you. But you can also pray to have our Lord send you guardian angels too. Have them send you a lot. I know Blessed Virgin had a thousand. So why not? You know, ask for as many as you can. I, I try to name as many angels' names as I can. The more I learn of their names, the more I am happy. I'm happy to invoke them for their protection. And their protection is secure. So, at least the angelic angels. You don't want to get the demonic ones, right? Those are the ones you don't want in your house. Or in your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why we do the St. Michael the Archangel Prayer. The long form is great if you can do that every day. But remember, with so many prayers, there can be Catholic fatigue. That's what you meant. Your staple can be Mass, Adoration, Confession, and the Rosary. And then everything on top of that, you can, you can cram in. I'd like to do the, the Holy Love Chaplet, the United Hearts Chaplet. The Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, I haven't gotten to St. Michael long form lately, but I still feel the effects of it from the past when I do it, the protection, because it's just such a strong prayer. So, highly recommended on those. If you can do it every day and you like that prayer, go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yesterday, my Holy Communion. I saw when when the priest lifted and the priests have are there there's sincere trouble now. You must pray for them so much. I hear this constantly from our Lord. Help! It's like help. You know they're trying to get rid of me, Anna. Oh, it's so horrible. Oh, like I said, the whole corporate office priest thing. It's it's devastating to the church. It rips out the love of God from the priest. This corporate office priesthood. It's horrible. We have to pray for our priests to become men of God, to have hearts. They need hearts, not just to be talking heads on the pulpit. And the minute they get off, they just don't care. Or they're just, you know, public pretenders or, or what do they call frenemies or something. We got to stop that nonsense. You know, we're, we're supposed to be a big family. We're not supposed to be all like political, so it's rather weird and strange. It really, uh, you know, it really, it it really affects the world in so many ways. But anyway, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. So there's the the priest holds up the host, and I saw it red. I'm like, uh oh, red like a 
like it remind me of Revelations. The moon will turn blood red and the sun will lose its light. I saw it all red. And I saw it turn into like a clock with coming to high noon. And that means to me, Blessed Mother's telling me there's no time left. There's just no time left. And I read that in the prophecies too, that things are really heating up. Uh, Melanie this year said September. Uh, her prophecies, her newest ones are on afterthewarning.com. I highly recommend you read them. Valentina Sydney Sear, like I said, has a new ones on afterthewarning.com. Her website went through some weird, weird glitches. So I don't know what was that, that was about. Probably an act of the, the devil on her. But uh, the music, come, I saw this music coming. I often see our Lord coming to me in ter terms of a musical because uh, that's how he likes to be with me. He may be different with you. But he's so beautiful. I see like the notes and he loves music. He loves it so much. He loves it when it honors him and we've ripped it away out of the church and we just paganized it and it's just not where it should be at all. It's not good. And they cast out people, musicians out of their out of their club, out of their choir cl clique, you know. And, and our Lord doesn't like that because our Lord loves music and he invites everyone into it. That's why the angels are singing. And, and it's sick. It's not a clique. Music is not a clique or a club. It's not, it's not a group. It's a, it's a being of God. It's, it's part of God who he is. And shame on it and any church that, that should try to suppress just music in the church by anyone. Any, anyone, whether they be wanting, you know. So, but the music, I saw it so beautiful. I love it. I saw the sacred heart like a precious stone. Like in my hand is this beautiful stone of mystery. And it has a crown around it. But it's like a stone. It's like a precious stone. It reminds me of the scripture. He, he searched, he found the precious pearl, and he hid it because it was so beautiful, and he bought it with, he sold a field, and he bought, spent it, all that he had, and that's the precious blood, right? The Holy Eucharist, which is going to be taken away from us. So, limited time offer. Go as much as you can, as soon as you can, and make that confession. You may not find the best confessor right now to confess to, but believe me, our Lord will give you the graces. Just go to confession. Do your confessions every week. It's a suffering. Remember, we're bleeding for the church while we're in the confession line. That's just how it is right now. I haven't felt, I pray to Padre P all the time for a good confessor and none comes. So I just have to be patient. I think a lot of people are in that category right now. They want a decent confessor and there's none to be had. But please keep going to confession and just offer it up for the priests. Offer it up for the church. If you have to take a half hour nap afterwards because it's just kind of mentally fatigued, Catholic fatigue, then just do it. But we have to keep going. <laughs> our little, you know, our little army, so to speak, of sacraments and things and sacramentals and prayer. Keep going. Remember. Blessed Mother, Ave Maria, when you get tired, and she'll she'll totally lift you up. She's a, your mother, and she will fill your heart with joy. You suddenly have some energy. You don't know how you got it back, but you know it's from only from God can sustain this at this point. Blessed Mother, I see you're so silvery and beautiful. At the minor elevation, I saw white roses all around. I knew it was like Blessed Mother. And her encouragement in the institution of the Holy Eucharist. And maybe her even calling our Lord to institute this. That's not written in scripture. That's just my own idea. You can decide what it means. But I just kind of feel at the wedding of Cana, she asked Jesus to do the miracle. And I think she asked him to do the to do the Holy Eucharist miracle. I really think it's a mother's love. And it's totally surrounded by white roses on the, in the minor elevation. I think this is a mother's gift to us. It's Holy Eucharist. Our Lord did what his mother asked and gave us Holy Eucharist. I totally believe it's blessed mother. So Ave Maria, I'm going to say is get your Marian hymns out and start singing because we're in, we're in some times. We're going to go through a time, a time, and half a time. 
and we might as well go singing and playing music and rejoicing, just like St. Paul said. Um, I hear, trust in me. God is the provider. God the Father is the provider, and God the Son is the provider, and the God the Holy Ghost, they all offer provision, and their provision is secure. It's greater than any man's provision. So trust in him. He won't cause you to fall. He will never want bad things. He's not like a person. He's not taking revenge and hoping to push you down. He's not like that, competitive and, and aggressive and, and stuff. And, and is about ambition and all that and worldly acclaim and worldly power. He's not about that. He will not let you fall against all odds. He won't let you fall. So trust in him. Trust in him for not just a few things, but everything. And he will work. He will work through you. He said he will say, servant, I can use you for my, my, my will. And what greater joy than that. So may God truly bless you. Remember the holy love. They have the blessed triple blessing cloth that helps you to have peace in God's will. And what more could a person ask for? Peace doing the will of God. May God truly bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.